Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Reborn and last time I guess I left with a bit of a cliffhanger. It wasn't much of a cliffhanger considering it wasn't anything too special but we're gonna go and save this poor little Zigzagoon that's over here being harassed by these ruffians. <laughs> yeah I already read this. They're kind of messed up. It sounds like they're I don't know what they're trying to do to the Zigzagoon, but it's definitely not very pleasant. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we could have taken these guys out easily with just our Torchic, but whatever. The game is basically yelling at you for not having a second Pokemon right away. <laughs> Alright, goodbye Lillipump. Pretty sure he's probably gonna faint here. Yep. Got some experience. And unfortunately we have to give some of this experience to the Rattata, which is too bad. Although these Pokemon are so weak that we're not gonna get much experience from them anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Wow, that Lillipop had a lot more defense, it seems. There we go. Hmph. Hey, all right, all right already. Is he supposed to be the Fonz, I wonder? <laughs> pa, fine, we'll stop. Zig, zigzag. Zigzagoon seems to want to join your party. Will you accept? Sure. No, I don't think I'm going to ever use the Zigzagoon, but I had to save him, didn't I? Now he can spend the rest of his life in a Pokemon PC box. <laughs> How nice of me, right? So you know what, I was saying how I wanted to have at least one just to keep, and I actually could use, uh, yeah, I could use Zigzagoon as an HM slave, so I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'll keep the Zigzagoon. Oh, that's too bad, it has gluttony. I think Zigzagoon's, yeah, I'm pretty sure Z that's a that's an entirely useless ability. I'm pretty sure Zigzagoons have, their other ability is that they pick up items, so unfortunately we got the, po we Got a bad roll of luck, I guess you could say. Yeah. So one thing that's kind of strange is I swear when I played this game last, and I was trying to find this last time, you could talk to one of these car these people and they would change your sprite because they were thinking of introducing, I think, like four more sprites for different characters so that you don't just have, you know either a black guy or a white guy to choose from. <laughs> and there's nothing more for us on that bridge, I don't think, so might as well. Actually, I wonder if... Eh, nah, I don't really want to risk it. I was thinking of trying to go against that one trainer who kicked our butts the first time, but I won't do that. Yeah, we caught him easy heading north, but we still don't know where he was trying to get to. So they probably have a base in that direction. Guessing they're talking about the one terrorist dude. Awesome old lady. Trainer, you know of the move Ally Switch, don't you? Reborn has a special technique for this move. Unlike in other regions, Ally Switch is used with negative priority as a pivot switch out at the end of a turn rather than the beginnings. Do consider what kind of tactical application this may have. Wait, what? Oh. So basically it lets you switch Pokemon at the end. So I guess that's if you know your Pokemon isn't going to be able to last, but you know they'll be able to last long enough to take one more hit. Okay, I didn't really read this. Something, bombs, bombs, something. Oh, wow. We can choose a bunch. Hunting. On the hunt. Need to spice up your roster looking for new Pokemon? Welcome to po Reborn's Pokemon Watch. They were looking for Pokemon in the Paradox and Opal Wards. What is there to find? Well, rumor has it sometimes a cheery blue Pokemon can be seen dancing around the fountain in North Paradox where it, when it rains. It is raining, so we could find this Pokemon, but we have to find whatever this fountain is first. I haven't seen you around here before. Seems like there's a lot of posh people in these parts. 
which seems kind of weird because they all seem to be in pretty fancy clothes considering, I don't know, considering this is kind of a dump. Other parts of the city do look a lot better. You just sort of start out in the most crappy looking impoverished areas. I guess in a way it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto in that sense. You start out in like the ghetto and then you have to work your way to the better looking areas. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of a weird comparison, comparing a game about Pokemon to Grand Theft Auto, but... I don't know, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Hey, you got some style, you got that skill to make it up? Yeah, I do. Hot shot. Yeah, it seems like sort of keeping up with the area. A lot of enemies seem to have either normal types or poison types. So basically it's kind of saying that the only Pokemon that are really able to survive in this area for the most part are poison and normal just because they're so common and I guess able to handle the pollution and everything. Poochiana. So now that I think about it, I'm, I am pretty sure that Grimer in the first game is said to have come about because of pollution as well, but they really don't make a big deal of it, you know? Like, you don't see, you know, widespread pollution or anything like that in the first games. So there are, like, some kind of more, I don't know, dark issues in the first games, or in Pokemon games, but they're usually a lot more downplayed, I guess you could say. That guy might wants me to follow him, but... I think I want to go to a Poke Center first. I like how they even made the Poke Center look all dark, you know, just to fit in with the theme of the game. Let me tell you something. If any, anybody comes up to you and offers you something they call it a rare candy, don't take it. That ain't something you want to give to your Pokemon either. That actually is kind of true, because I know that what if you give a Pokemon a rare candy... You, they typically have lower stats, so sure it's immediate level up, but then you don't get a, as many IVs, I believe. Goodness, I got quite a surprise just then. A Pokemon jumped out at me from a dumpster. The Paradox Ward is the second largest ward of Reborn. Only Obsidia is bigger. Dot dot dot. Potion, wow. Training, you know, the move ally switch, don't you? Okay, yeah, I talked to this chick. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go into that one building the guy went into. <sighs> this here is our hideout. You coo, so you get in. Okay, then. Hey, you, you sure you got the stuff to score back here? Punk Macy. It's kind of funny how it seems like like 70% of the enemies in this game or the enemy trainers are in dark, you know, drab outfits. It just kind of makes the game more, I don't know, dark and depressing. But like I said, it does get a bit more bright and cheery. I shouldn't say cheery. It gets a bit more colorful is the only thing I should really say. It does not got I don't think it gets by any means any more cheery. Goodbye, Benary. Alright, you got stuff. There's alleyways like this all over the city, you just gotta look for them. And a super potion, wow, that's pretty neat. And I guess I could actually go in some of these buildings, because... This is a pretty nice complex, except for the group of thugs that hangs out back. Sigh, my Krikaton hasn't been doing well at all lately. It's so lethargic. I don't know what to do, so I called in someone to help. I hope she arrives soon. Um, hello? Oh, oh. 
Are you Shelly? Yes. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Um, is this the Pokemon you told me about? It's my Krigatot. It hasn't been feeling well. Okay, poor thing. Um, I don't really know that much about taking care of Pokemon, but I do know Bug Pokemon. Let me take a look. Ah, your Krigatot isn't sick, but I know this pain it feels. It's lonely. Does it get out very much? Ah, uh, what? No, something something can't take care of it as much as I should. I think that's the problem. Um, it would be best for Krigatot if it was with an active trainer. I see if... If it's what's best for Krigaton, then... Excuse me, would you be willing to look after Krigaton? I want you, but it's going to suffer. I shouldn't keep it. You look like a bright young trainer. Sure. Okay, thank you. Please take good care of Krigaton. <sighs> and yeah, I think she's a leader or whatever. Um, bye. It was nice to meet both of you. Feel free to stop by my gym. Okay, yeah, I already talked to him. Can't get in the elevator, unfortunately, I don't think. And I've noticed in this game, you get a lot of Pokemon for free, but it's kind of just to spite you, because I've noticed like 90% 90, 90 of them that you get just for free like that one. Like, we've gotten a Zigzagoon and a Krikatot for free, but in terms of like stats and their, you know, type, they're not really useful. <laughs> So, you get a bunch of free Pokemon, but it's kind of just to spite you because none of them are really actually useful. So, that's kind of funny. Alright. Oi, this is my ice. Get out. Street Rat Bob. Damn it, Bob. Quit spending your time out of this bridge. The one thing I should try to do, though, pretty soon is try to find at least a second Pokemon because I haven't really found a Pokemon that's worth keeping yet. I, I suppose Blitzel is the one I might consider getting that Blitzel. But I still need to train my Torchic if I'm going to get the Blitzel. I suppose it is already level 15. Oh, and yeah, there's this small fire -like Pokemon that sometimes hides down here. And as you can see, it's right over there. So yeah, depending on the weather conditions and the time of day in this game, different Pokemon appear, which is pretty interesting. Pansier seems to be afraid of the rain. It's too scared to move. Do you want to rescue? Oh, we just, we just, yeah, we, we just got this thing for free. Unfortunately, we already have a fire Pokemon, so having two is just a bit useless. Yeah, our Krikotot's kind of useless. Zigazagoon, I think, is just going to be our HM slave, because there are HMs in this game, which... It's pretty crappy because it's like you're already at a pretty massive disadvantage with when it comes to a lot of the battles. So making you have to teach your Pokemon HMs is just kind of it just kind of adds insult to injury. Oh, where the heck's the Poke Center? I like completely forgot where it is. Okay, yeah, it's down here. There we go. That's what I've been looking for, and I just like blinked on where the heck it is. All right, I might as well deposit some of these guys. Sorry, Krikaton and Pangor, but you get to live in our PC now for the rest of eternity. Okay, yeah, he doesn't have much to say anymore. Actually, I think we're probably... It shouldn't be too hard to take that lady out now. Yeah. Our Torchic's definitely a lot stronger than it was. Ah, oh, really? Did you really do this? I think we have an Awakening. But I don't know if I want to waste it. And I think if you remember, we didn't... I don't think we found any items that re remove, like, status effects. Like in that one main shop there weren't any I don't think there was like a antidote or anything so that kind of screws us up there we go yeah we shouldn't have a problem with taking out this ducklet now ah oh. fortunately it doesn't do very much damage now now that sh should be good there we go come by any time <laughs>
Yeah, I should go in some of these buildings because there are a lot of goodies. Yeah, I wish I would have actually went through these buildings more methodically because I kind of just have randomly gone in whatever one I feel like. Yeah, I was in here. Let's go in here. Hmm. No. Wait, what? Oh. My husband, the name raider. So yeah, they're obviously two gay old men. Whatever. Isn't Glee a great name? Glee? Isn't Twops a great name? <laughs> I feel like that's just randomly generated games names, probably. The official name raider. It's kind of funny how I think in every single Pokemon there is an official name raider. So that's pretty funny how they're... It kind of makes it seem like there's just a bunch of competing name raiders who don't want to... Who, who think that they are the one official one and every other one is just copying them or whatever. Alright, this is one of the nicest complexes in all of Peridot. And it's all thanks to Mr. Seacrest Wonderful Garden. So you wish to enter my garden once I let anyone in, but then... The careless people of the city ruined it. Are you different than them? Can you prove to me that you are of higher caliber? Show me your dedication. I like how, how to prove your trust, you must battle him. Which I feel like that doesn't exactly sh that doesn't exactly show how I don't know dedicated or good of a person you are. But fine, it gives us a, a bit of experience, I guess. Enough. I've seen enough. Please treat my garden with respect. So yeah, now we can go in here and catch a bit more unique Pokemon. But I think it's pretty much just a bunch of bug Pokemon, which aren't really useful for the most part. I mean, like I said, I normally just sort of choose whatever Pokemon I feel like when it comes to Pokemon games, but in this particular game, you do have to have quite a bit of strategy in terms of which Pokemon you're willing to choose. <sighs> Shurubi. I've never had one of these, and I have no idea whether or not they're any good, so I can't exactly say. Oh, and yeah, I won shot at him. <laughs> Guess I should have switched my Zigzagoon out, huh? Yeah, just another stupid little Wurmple. I guess I, sh I could battle these because that will raise our IVs. Caterpie. Actually, if I could find a... What is it called even? A Beedrill? I'd actually consider getting a Beedrill if I found one. And the reason why is because Beedrills are quite strong for bug Pokemon, I've noticed. At least any time I've fought one... They seem to have, well, one, they have really high speed, and they seem to have a pretty high attack as well. So if I could find one of them, I'd definitely consider getting it. And this game does show IVs, too, so I could take a look. Yeah, our attack's maxed. Speed's pretty high for what it could be. Everything else, not so much. I don't know how the IVs really work in these games, so... I won't attempt to give any advice on them. I just know that the higher they are, the better. And that's all that I really know. And I know certain Pokemon give you certain IVs. So I know what some people do is when they're trying to sort of raise the perfect Pokemon, they'll just stay in an area like this for like hours at a time just to make sure all their Pokemon have the highest IVs they can, which is kind of messed up, but whatever. Ooh, I could capture the Caterpie. I don't know. I remember Butterfree isn't the worst either, but I don't really know if I want to risk it. At least we got one now. Not that I'll ever probably use it. Its voracious appetite compels it to devour leaves bigger than itself without hesitation or at least a terribly strong odor from its antenna. No.
Another canopy. Yeah. Yeah, I think this episode was a bit shorter than most, but I think I'm going to end it here. I might even do a bit of off-screen grinding, or not really grinding, but I might spend some more time in here off-screen just to see if I can find anything good. So, yeah, I'm going to end the episode here. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you next time, and good.